Today we're gonna turn a flat looking image with a lot of background distractions into a 3D masterpiece. Now of course it's a 3D effect and trust me, it's a very simple Photoshop trick. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friend already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Before we do anything, go to image, mode and make sure 16 bits per channel is selected because we're going to be adding a lot of adjustment layers and if you're not working in 16 bits and you're working in 8 bits, there's going to be some banding. Have a look at this. So if we create a simple gradient fill with dark grey to a little lighter grey, something like this, can you see the banding right here? You can, right? A little bit of banding. On top of that, if we add a curves adjustment layer and make it a little more extreme. Can you see the banding now? Let's make it more extreme so that you can see it clearly. There you go. On top of that, let's add one more curves adjustment layer. Let's make it even more extreme like this. Of course, you can see the banding right here. However, if you were working with 16 bits by going to image, mode and if you just change it to 16 bits per channel have a look the banding is gone the more adjustment layers you add the images tend to break and that kind of problem does not happen with 16 bits and that is why i recommend that you go to image mode and change it to 16 bits before working now the background right here is very distracting you can either blur it add a color or simply change it in this case i'm just going to make it black so make a copy of the background layer by pressing ctrl or command j and this is going to be our subject layer now make a selection of the subject you can use any of these three tools right here and once you select one of those two Tools. at the top you will see select subject click on that it does a pretty good selection and then you can click on the mask button now you have the subject separate and at the bottom of that you can create a solid color adjustment layer change it to black and there you have it now if you want to get the absolute accurate masking and you want to give time to it use the pen tool there's nothing better than that as of now so that's what i did i took more time and created a path around the subject and made a selection out of it i saved the selection so let me quickly apply that so i'm just going to go to select Load selection, I had saved it as subject. Let's select that, hit OK, and there we have the selection. Click on the mask button. I have a small gift for you. I'm gonna give you this PST with the perfect selection so that you don't have to spend the time to do it. Now, since we're gonna add a lot of lights to it, let's create a dark base. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now, this is purely an artistic choice, not a technical choice. Let's take the rightmost point down, something like this. This is a nice base to add highlights. And now it is time for us to target each area of the body separately. So first of all, let's target the right leg or the left leg, whatever you want to call it. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now create a point in the middle and just take it up something like this. Let's name it right leg. RL is fine. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. And you already know where we are going with this. So take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right and just focus on this leg, nothing else. We are taking the curves layer away from the dark areas of the underlying layer or the layers that lie under it. So at about 49 and 50, it is about a nice shade. And then we need to find out where the highlights end. The highlights end at about this position at 88. So just go to the lower end, which was 49.50. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and take it all the way apart to 88-ish, which was the higher end. Now you can take it even more apart, but that gives you a rule of thumb. Once you're satisfied, hit OK. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask, Take the brush, white as the foreground color, make sure it's a soft round brush and just paint on this leg. If you want to do one more layer, you're more than welcome to do it. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. And this is right leg too. Do the exact same thing. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. And this is for those extreme highlights. So take the slider to the right and let's keep it only in these areas. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart. This looks amazing. Hit OK. And let's take it down ever so slightly. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Do not forget to paint just on this area. Or you can just hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click and drag this mask. Drop it right here. Yes, we want to replace it. And now you have a copy. Similarly, let's do the left leg and the rest of the body. So both the legs are done. It looks weird, but wait till we do the rest of the body. To make the process faster, you can even create an action. And this can be just a temporary action. Go to Window, Actions. Click on the folder. This is Curves. H means highlight, hit OK. And inside of that, let's start recording the highlights. Hit record and all we do is create a curves adjustment layer. Take it up just like this. And we double click on the right hand side of the adjustment layer and we nudge it ever so slightly, hit OK. Now, inside of the actions, let's stop the action right here. Let's simply click on this button so that we get to change it. And now when you play the action, the highlights action, play it it brings up the layer styles dialog box automatically. Also, you can assign a keyboard shortcut. So double click on the action and let's give it F2, Shift F2. So anytime you press Shift F2, there you go. Now we are focusing on the torso. So let's move the slider right. This is where we want to break it off. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart. 
and take it apart like that. Make sure it's not too close, otherwise it will look patchy. Hit OK and repeat the process. Let's fast forward. Similarly, I'm going to do the rest of the areas. So there you go. All of the highlights are now applied. Have a look at the before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. Tell me that's not a big difference. Now let's do a quick rundown of what we did. So first of all, we have our base. It makes it easy for us to add the highlights later. And again, you can add darkness slowly and gradually, but this is the artistic style I prefer. If you want to go the other way, that's absolutely perfectly fine. So first we did the right leg. We added a little more highlight to it. Similarly, we did the same for the left leg. For the torso as well, we had different masks for different areas. So here, overall, here, a little bit of this area. And on top of that, we added more. Then the right arm, a little more right arm. And now is the time to go back and, you know, adjust this if you wish to. So I want to make it slightly darker. Look at the overall image. Make sure it's not imbalanced. The left arm, the left arm again. I added a lot of layers for the left arm because the light was not getting in there as much. And then the neck and finally the head. And then I forgot the boxer, so I did that as well. So there we have it. But it's still not over. Now as for the highlights, we can also add some shadows, right? But before we do that, select the topmost highlight layer, hold the shift key, select the bottommost highlight layer, press Ctrl or Command G, and let's name this highlights. Now create one more curves adjustment layer. And this time you don't have to do it one by one. If you want, you can. But I'm just going to create a point in the middle. Take it down like this. Already it's creating an incredible look. Adjust it a little bit. Double click on the right hand side of the layer. And this time do the opposite. Take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. We are taking it away from the bright areas of the layers that lie under it. And therefore, underlying layer sliders. Let's take it away like this. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart. Take it apart like this. On the right as well if you want. You can take it apart. Hit OK and then adjust it to your liking. And I feel that there's going to be some areas where we can apply it a little more. For example, I'm going to create one more curves adjustment layer. Take it down like this. Maybe in the torso, there's a little more scope. So let's take it down. Just focus on the torso, nowhere else. Hit OK. Select the mask. Press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush, white as the foreground color, and just paint right over here. Adds that dimension. Now go back to the curves and adjust it to your liking. I feel that we can add it again all over the image. But when you're making edits or art, it's very important to know when to stop. Otherwise, it will never end. I feel that a couple more areas can benefit from shadows. So I couldn't help myself. So I did one for torso, left arm, right arm, left leg and right leg. Look at the drama. That's so cool. Don't forget to select the top one. Hold the shift key. Select the bottom one for the shadows. Press Ctrl or Command G. And these are the shadows group. Now, after you have done that, this is going to be the most important step. You have to decide how much highlights overall you want. So select the highlights group and decrease the opacity accordingly or keep it at 100. It's up to you. So I'm going to keep it at about 72. And for the shadows, I guess 84 is fine. Now as a finishing touch to make the image pop overall and expand the dynamic range, let's create one last curves adjustment layer. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, take the right slider to the left and stop at the point where you begin to see artifacts. That's where we are beginning to lose details. Let's stop right here. That's fine. Similarly, you can do with the left hand side as well. So right here, we're losing details. We can stop right here or give it a little more headroom. Keep it something like this. And there you have it. By the way, if you didn't want this curve or any of the curve to change the color or even touch it, just change the blend mode to luminosity and it won't do it. But for the most part, I prefer to keep it normal. But for the last one, it adds a beautiful desaturated effect that I love. You can even create a point right here, take it down for added contrast and drama. That helps a little. And there you have your image. Now, since there's so much drama going on, a lot of spots on the skin gets exaggerated as well, as you can see right here. Now, you can go ahead and remove it or just make it slightly lighter. It's up to you. So with the subject layer selected, you can make a copy of that by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And in here, you can take the patch tool and remove these spots if you want to and only if you want to and if the subject is okay with that. There you go. Similarly, these spots as well. There you go. There you go. And then if you want to keep a little bit of it, because this drama kind of exaggerates it too much, you can just decrease the opacity of it since this is on a different layer. So you can keep it at slight opacity if that's your style. Again, just a reminder, this is art. There is no guideline you have to follow. You have to do what you like and what looks best to you. So if you prefer a little more colorful look, you can change the blend mode of the curves adjustment layer at the top. 
from luminosity back to normal. That's what I like sometimes. And then you can use hue saturation to modify it according to your liking. I'm just gonna name it pop. So just after a little spot removal and opacity adjusting, here is the final result. So here's the before and here is the after. Thank you for staying till the end of the video. And since you stayed, here's the pro tip. With a little change in pixels, you can massively change the self-confidence of this model. And here's how you do it. Press Control, Alt, Shift and E, create a stamp visible layer, a layer with everything merged in, and then press Control or Command D and stretch it ever so slightly. So hold the Shift and the Alt and stretch it very slightly, not too much, just a little bit like this. And have a look at the difference. Here's the before. Here's the after. It doesn't look like much, but makes him more bulkier, confident, and this is such a small difference you cannot even tell. If you zoom out, have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Very slight difference, but ask a bodybuilder. He'll tell you how hard it is to gain just a pound of muscle. Let's do a quick recap. First of all, we removed the distractions of the background. We simply made it black. You can either blur it, change it, it's up to you. Secondly, we created a base so that it's easier for us to stack highlights. Then we created different highlight layers and targeted specific areas. We took the curves up and with the help of Blendif, applied it only in the highlights. We did the opposite with the shadows layer and at the top, we added some pop. That's it. And that's how you add shape and dimension to a flat looking image. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Go!